Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So, kind of a special day, something a little different. We are in Republic, Washington, Ferry County. We're outside of Stone Rose, where we can go and do some fossil digging. But first, we're gonna head inside. We're gonna meet the guys. We're gonna get a little tour of the place, and then we're gonna go get some fossils. It should be a really good day. Meet Andy. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you work here, obviously, at Stone Rose. Yep. And you're going to give us a little tour of the inside of the facility, which is back here, which is awesome. It's a very big space. We've kind of been poking, been poking around. They have a well, second grade class here yep. right now. So uh, as they were getting the tour, I was poking around. Let's hear what Andy has to say about this stuff. There's so many good fossils back here to look at. It's a much bigger space. Our old space it used to fit in this building area right here. So we had a really tiny space to work in. But <clears throat> this is our first case here, and it's the stone rose rose leaves. So we have the oldest known rose family fossils in the world, mm -hmm. which happens to be this nice little apple. Leaf. A lot of people don't realize that <clears throat> apples, cherries, peaches, plums, those kind of things, they're all within the rose family, not just a single rose that we hand out for Valentine's Day. And we have a few other varieties in here as well, some not so known ones and some that haven't been finished out yet, but yeah. <clears throat> in this one, we have our other leaves, like uh, the more known ones, like the elm and birch species. And ev everything here at Stone Rose is Eocene. Yes. Eocene. Eocene, about 49 to 52 million. And I mean, we it would be a huge video to try to talk about what this area looked like during the Eocene, but Northeast Washington was a very different place during the Eocene than what you would see today if you came out to Republic. Yep, and it's very different from us and the coast too. So that's, we have some older extinct maple ones that don't look anything like the ones that we have today. Um, I actually found a couple of these uh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's very interesting stuff. And then we have our conifers, which this one here is our most known one, the one that comes down the most often. And we have little bits of ginkgo, which honestly is one of the cooler ones because it's only evolved about three times. Whereas like the rose species has hundreds and hundreds of family members. And then we have our flowers. So <clears throat> this one here is the one that's our logo. It's on all of our stuff. I'm wearing probably four or five of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's actually not in the rose family. It's just more uh, photogenic. And it's actually from cocoa and mallow. Uh, family plants. Hmm. So nothing to do with roses actually. So it's Florisantia quilconensis. I said that mostly right that time. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad it's not just me that has the issue with the pronunciation. Oh, for the first uh, year and a half I said it horribly wrong until somebody <laughs> corrected me. Um, and then we have our more unique stuff. Like this is the reproductive for the meta sequoia. The one that we find a lot over there. And then we have some cycad and some horsetail. Um, and then, of course, some of our species of fish there, which are really nice. <clears throat> then our insects. Several actual species have been identified from the work that the scientists have done on these insects here. Hmm. They're, in a few cases, they're the last piece of the puzzle. Um, and so, with well, any luck, we'll find some of those today. These are some of my favorites because they look like they have stripes. Um, breaks in them, but they're actually because when they're alive, they had stripes on their wings. Oh, interesting. Very. Um, we have a nice video in the background that we had our friend help us put together. Um, shows our intro and all that other kind of stuff. And then we have a nice case here and some of our bigger fossils. So when somebody comes, they always get a little tour from you. Mm -hmm. And then check in and we walk up to the site, That's which right. is yep. like three blocks away. Yes, three blocks. Um, we do the admission and all that other stuff, and then I explain how to get into the rock. You know, I wave this one about quite a bit. I've been handled for about eight years now, so it's kind of rubbed <laughs> in. Um, we point out some of the ones that we split apart. Nice hammer and chisel that we rent out as well. Uh, let's see here. Where's my... There we go. <clears throat> and then we pop this one open, and it's always an exciting time for people. And we point out that they can take three fossils home at the end of the day, mm -hmm. but they bring down everything that they find. Because even the smaller, really tiny bits are usually quite interesting sometimes. Yeah, all of ours is um, a sed uh, sedimentary shale. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little bit of mudstone, you know, a little bit 
of iron. So iron and manganese is what causes the red and the orange. You know, and so some of it's heavier, some of it's a little bit lighter, but it still comes apart really easily. And none of ours are touched up or anything like that. That's as they came out of the ground. Yeah, there's no, you know, when you get fossils here, you're not doing preparation. There's not, they're not having to put glue on them and cure them and do that whole thing. They're just, they're, they're good. Nope. The only glue we put on ours is to put them back together like this fish, <laughs> then glued back together. Yeah. And so we have a nice uh, fossil glue that we will blind things back together. I didn't spend 45 minutes putting one of those back together once because mm -hmm. it was in like 13 <laughs> pieces. But yeah. And so then we have our gift shop on the other side. has all our sonorous uh, shirts and stuff like that. We have more of it over here. And then over here is where we do all of our identification and preparation and so that kind of thing. So after we go up to the hill and find some fossils, we're gonna br we bring them back down here and you guys do all of the identification, yep. which, is, which is very cool. Because that's, I mean, that's the, the problem that I always see, that I always hear about in the rock and mineral world, what, <laughs> attaching the name to the specimen. Yeah, <clears throat> and so we're lucky that we have a book mm -hmm. that actually covers these things. Well, not all of them, it covers a good chunk. Because, but, well, I mean, doing research here is a big part of what Stone mm -hmm. does. It's not just, yep. you know. Yep, and we study them and see them every day. But it also points out some really good points of how to register the leaves. So, <clears throat> this one here is my second or third favorite here, and it's a dogwood leaf because it has a really nice texture to it. Mm -hmm. um, I told somebody the rock is fuzzy, and they kind of looked at me funny, but the texture when it comes out of the rock is actually almost kind of fuzzy, hmm. which is strange. But one thing that we do is the overall size of the leaf, whether or not it has a distinct margin to it, and the way that its veins form. <clears throat> these ones are the birch. The birch is fun because it has four teeth right here. One, two, three, four, and then it dips in. Almost half of the birch in the world do the same thing. No idea why it's four, but that's what it is. And so that's a big part of identifying the leaves themselves as they go through. And so we have all these different ones here. How, how current is this book? I mean, because you guys are, I mean, new, new things have been found relatively recently. This one's a couple years old. Okay. Um, cause it was updated a little while ago and they're in the process of updating it again with newer names and stuff like that and corrections. Cause this one's actually supposed to have a T in it, <laughs> <laughs> but they have one that hopefully almost done and then they get a grant for it and they do the printing and all that mm -hmm. other stuff. So people you know, bring your fossil back down. You can help with the identification and possibly split them down a little bit, right? Yep. If there's, if you have a big piece with a little fossil on it. Uh, you yeah. have the you have well, splitters here. <clears throat> I have this one here, which is just basically, you know, Arbor. operates as a yeah. giant chisel. Nope. Arbor press with a. Yep. And it works actually really well for like the little pieces or the smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and then over here, I have a bigger one, which one of our members actually created when he realized he needed much more compression yeah. there. And so some bigger bolts. Some of it's welded, and we just spin this lever right here. It goes down and it'll crunch even the biggest rocks. Mm -hmm. We get good sized pieces <laughs> that I put through there. And so that will trim them down. <clears throat> if we need to do any more work, we have more hammers here. And our smaller ones, we have our brushes and our. Oh, that's not good. Some Glue. glues for putting them back together. And yep. We, so we have we have all of our fossil collecting tools already, mm -hmm. uh, but you guys also have tools for people that maybe just don't have anything. Yep, we rent so out a set of hammer and chisel. That's cool. And for people to go up there and do their own digging, and generally about once a year or so, we'll make sure the chisels are nice and pointed. I definitely think a lot of people watching this right now have, we, we all have our hammers and chisels. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. Yeah, and so then we go through, and with any luck, you know, we ID everything, and then we'll put a number for them mm -hmm. on the rock in pencil for the sheet over here. Yeah, there's a sheet with everything on it. And these are the, the majority of the names of the stuff that we have. If mm -hmm. it's not on the sheet, then sometimes we'll retain it. Because on occasion, we do retain things for scientific or educational purposes. And so on occasion, that does happen. So we'll take your name and number, and we'll put it on this nice little card. And uh, it'll say what it is or what we think it is, and then where we got it, the name of the person, and the address so it doesn't get lost. And then we'll put some other stuff on there, and then it goes 
into the collection until somebody can look at it. Hmm. Um, on occasion, the scientist that is working on them will sometimes incorporate the person's name into it. So there's several actual things over there that are named after the people that found them. Yeah, I also saw that you have that on your website as well. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, which is really interesting to see. Sometimes it takes a while, but mm -hmm. you know, it's usually pretty worth it. Um, we also trim them down with these two. Oh, some little nippers. Yep, which I recently found out were actually for horse nut. Yeah. Or horse <laughs> shoes. Awesome. Cool. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's about it. We can walk we can walk up there. Yes, awesome. definitely. Thank you so much for You're showing welcome. us around the, the facility here. <laughs> Walking up to the fossil site, we have our supplies, a rock hammer, a couple of uh, flat chisels, my favorite fossil splitting tool, the dinner knife, and in the little black bag, we have a jeweler's loop. Well, forgive the wind, we're a little windy out here today. Meet Greg, and you're uh, part of the Stone Rose facility, and here we are on site. Basically, all of all of this. We have a different different groups of people out here. Um, but let's let's talk about some of the geology of the site. Okay. Well, looking behind, you see those lines there represent the bottom of the lake. You notice they're also kind of twisted up, and they go back that way. Mm -hmm. Well, 50 million years ago, they were all flat. Now, volcanics and whatnot have changed that around. And what we're looking for is the loose rock here that has come out of the, the strata there. And we have kind of two main types, what we call the sandstone. It's big blocky stuff here. And sandstone takes more energy to be deposited. And so mostly what you're gonna get are these chunks of wood, something I call beauty bark. Every once in a while you find a cone uh, or tiny specks of amber, which are really cool. But usually it's this, and it doesn't split very well. I mean, you can see this hardly has layering. That is really... That would be significantly more difficult to split versus... Very much so. What you have in your hand right there. So what we have here is the shale. More or less silt or clay stone. You can see the layering much better. And the ideal thing is to find one that's got cracks in it. Like that. And you can sometimes open that with your hands. See it's moving open? Oh boy. <laughs> Not quite. Let's see if I can get out oh, my oh, oh, tool there. My little uh, pry bar here, formerly a file. And okay, well, there is a fossil. It's also a branch. You can kind of see that it looks like there's a knot right there. <laughs> black stuff is the actual carbon that was in the wood. So anyways, that's the ideal thing is to kind of look through the loose rocks here for the fine grain shale, especially the layers. And if it's got a split, sometimes you can just open it with your hands, which is really neat. The split oftentimes is nature's way of showing where the fossils are. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it seems kind of weird, but water will seep into the rock and where the fossil is, it's like kind of a little cave. And so water gets in there and it pools, and you know what happens when it freezes? It expands, and that's what gives you that crack. Hmm. So a lot of times, not every time, but if you see a crack, pop open it up. Yeah, pop it. Give it a shot. Yep. And it looks like so we're in this kind of lower site, and there's an upper site. Is that? Well, there's actually two more layers, uh, levels. You can see, whoop, I'm gonna fall over. Here we go. It's okay to be sitting around. Just above that green tape is another tier, and then beyond where the trees are is the third level. Okay. We can go see that. Yeah, if we walk around, that'd be great. Sure. So that is the town of Republic. We were just talking down there, and this is the upper site. And who do we have here? This is Ruby. Ruby, hey. <laughs> oh, uh, very cute. <laughs> I put down her blanket. She didn't like it. Hauled it down. Turned over nice. So Greg was just telling me that this right here is an old wooden water pipe, and uh, I've only seen like good examples of these. Not to say this isn't a good example, but it's neat. Uh, so it's basically just uh, wire that's been coiled 
with wood on the inside that would hold it. And then when they would put water through these, it would swell and make, well, you'd have a wooden pipe. It's very interesting to see up close like this. I almost feel a little bad walking around here. <laughs> that's gonna get crunched. So down there, that's for public dig. You're gonna show us the member only dig. Yes, I am. You gotta have this kind of tag, you go up there. It's, it's more or less the same layers, but there's a lot fewer people and uh, we should find some cool stuff. And anybody can join. That's correct. So you, you, anyone out there can become a member very easily. Awesome. Well, let's go see what's up the trail. Which uh, is a little bit weird because everything here is from the bottom of the lake. But those are, except for the one nice leaf, which I think is an elm hmm. or, or sorry, a birch. You have sort of hash on the bottom there. Very cool. But yeah, the strategy, just turn these rocks over, look carefully on both sides, and then look on the edge for the layers. Yeah. Uh, and, and the cracks. Start, start looking for the, yep. start splitting. Get to work, you guys. Yeah. I also just found one that's got a couple of Looks layers like already yeah. ready to split out. Good. But yeah. Now, this, if Ruby will give me a chance here. <laughs> Ruby just wants to give me a kiss. <laughs> the strategy would be to go right down the middle of the rock. If you get close to the edge, it's going to pop out. But if you go down the middle and kind of tap, 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 working all the way around, mm -hmm. you get that to open up. And then each of the halves you can open into halves as well. The idea with the tapping is you're setting a vibration going into the rock and where the fossil is, is actually a weak part. And so the vibrations propagate there and split on the fossil instead of just wherever you're aiming. Very cool. I think we can do this. And that's going to be a pretty one when they take, clean it up. Taking the first one I found. <laughs> Greg just flipped something over here. Look at that, that's so cool. And that, that's a redwood, I think, coast redwood, like mm -hmm. California redwoods. Very nice. Your opinion here. Absolutely. Are those concretions? Is that a concretion? Yes, they are. Iron concretions. Rarely we find them with fossils in them. And usually it's just maybe some gypsum or I think I found pyrite. Mm -hmm. But you can see the, the rust that's, yeah. that's iron based. And obviously, I assume they can break out of the matrix and so just yes. find them around here. Yep. To keep an eye out for that is actually a fish scale. Oh wow! Very neat. I was not all the way leaned down, thankfully. A little fly wing. Oh, a little fly wing. Cool. And what do you think? What, what's that right uh, up at the top? That's probably a pine needle. Yeah, you'll notice we don't have much in the way of bones mm -hmm. or shell. And I'm kind of thinking that the water was probably a little acidic. Hmm. So those things just did not fossilize. They, they uh, dissolved. Is there, is there anything that we can determine from looking at the shell shale, that would indicate like acidity of this lake when it was here? Perhaps maybe in areas where we have, you know, a lot of the concretions and stuff, mm -hmm. there's something going on there that's different from the areas that don't have concretions. Hmm. You know, somebody a lot smarter than me has got to kind of work on that. People call it stone rose, oh, but it's actually hey. not from the rose family. Yeah. Uh, but it, it is our logo and we are stone rose, so it kind of gets uh, lumped into there. Yes. But that's actually the backside of a, of a calyx, which, you know, in a flower, that green part on the bottom, that's a calyx. So these are sepals and not petals. Mm. 
And this was meant to float off in the wind to uh, uh, disperse the seed. Yep. And here I am looking at these concretions being like, this is going to look really neat under the microscope. <laughs> right, yeah. Their own. Yeah. So that's a larch? That's the... Yeah. Uh, it's the... What do you call it? Well, the wing seeds, Samara. Yes, or yeah, the little things that spin helicopter, helicopter yeah. down. Very cool. Oh, should we split the rest of this? Have at it. This will look interesting under the scope, just with the leaf yeah. formation. Yeah, th th this is a neat little guy. And what is that? It's one that often looks like an insect. I call it a pseudo-insect. But it's actually a elm fruit. Oh. It's a really cool fossil. Well, I think, uh, I think we need to take this little one here. A real fossil, yeah. It's just a fake insect. The jeweler's loop sure is nice, yes. Here, absolutely. like, uh, I would absolutely throw a, a 10 power jeweler's loop in your pocket. Looking at some of these little things under uh, your jeweler's loop is really nice, and even uh, taking a photo on your phone and zooming in can be really good. But jeweler's loop, you know, is for something good enough to keep. So, if we take these back and we don't want it. It goes in a box that will be used later for yeah, for, sure. for educational purposes, sent out to a classroom and, and the like. Yeah. Yep. Don't want to burn it. That also may be part of a uh, coprolite. It doesn't look like the fish was there and just sort of fell apart. Hmm. It looks like it was probably uh, pooped there. <laughs> you never recognize that. So fish that got eaten. Yeah. By other yep. fish? Huh? What eats well, it? Well, um, <laughs> yes, maybe. Uh, we sometimes call that loon vomit because loons eat fish and, you know, maybe they gorp it out. I don't know. Uh, we had other things in the lake. Um, you know, maybe even owl pellet or something like that. It's really hard to say. We don't get many bones fossilized. Yeah. Uh, but what we do get... Uh, when we have fish bones, it tends to be sort of rusty looking, like maybe iron seeped into the bones and allowed it to uh, withstand the acidic water. As a possibility, I, I don't know. Hmm. I think uh, we should take this take this back and bring that down. And, and those also are uh, worm tracks, the trails you see in mm -hmm. there, uh, which are more probably a burrow of a shrimp or something like that. Um, but yeah, they, uh, people do like to see fish material and that might make it into the outreach if you didn't want to keep yeah. it. If there were, uh, teeth showing, yeah. and I didn't look close enough to see that. Um, but that would be, you can identify what the fish is from the teeth. I think we'll put this, we'll put this here. I think, uh, I think we're almost ready here. We, uh, filled up a little two gallon bucket in, uh, in no time. <laughs> it's you. very easy up here. All the... Everything. I don't know. I, I certainly feel like I'm just breaking them walking around. Occupational hazard. Don't get too worked <laughs> up. It happens. The sun is going away. We filled up a two gallon bucket in, in no time. Uh, so we're going to take this back down to the center. We can lay it all out on the table. There'll be some identifying. There'll be some cleaning up of some of the specimens and we can kind of look at them, look at them there.
Okay, so this is all of the stuff that we collected up there on the site. That uh, we weren't up there very long, <laughs> and we got brought back all of this stuff. So now, now we're gonna go through it, and we're gonna we can figure out what this stuff, what it is. Rocks and go through all the different things. You know, it doesn't really always take that long. Sometimes, you know, some people will spend the whole day up there. Sometimes, not so much. And so this is the concretion that was broken in half, and. Uh, yeah, you're just using Starbond, Starbond Medium, so, yep. you know. And this one actually works fairly well. Like, a little goes a long way, but this one's like a really porous looking one, so we're going to put a little bit more than we did so that it soaks in and holds it together. And sometimes we'll put this um, activator on, mm -hmm. and it'll bond it way faster. And it's a clean break, so that always helps. And so we'll just hold it in place for a few moments because the uh, pressure helps it bond too. We have a nice March fly right here, so that's really good. You got the entire wing there sitting right on top of a pine needle, so that's always cool. And of course, the fly sauté here, the majority of it got nice venation. What, what is that? That is um, a pine needle right on the edge of a crack, actually. Hmm. Which is why it's kind of sideways there. Um, and then, oh, <laughs> that's interesting. Normally, we don't have them come out the side of the rock like that. So that's a bit of birch right there. Uh, we have a really nice bit of metasequoia there. So metasequoia accentalis, which is dawn redwood, found in um, northeastern China, I believe. Mm -hmm. Might be wrong about the north. But it still grows there. Um, they have a couple in the Seattle Arboretum, I believe, as well. And they're a little bit shorter than the California ones. So that should be good. We'll Excellent. let it cure for a few more seconds there, but it's nice and solid and back together now. It is a really nice seat seat. That one could be birch as well. Got some nice serrations here. This one is actually a little bit of a leaf. So it's like the very base point of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I don't bother to use my loop, so using um, the phone to magnify it a little bit helps a lot too. This is a very nice leaf here, and you can see it by the edges here that you could probably pop yeah, that off. Yeah, pop that off. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little bit of the rose family, so probably um, Pronus or something. Or Prunus or uh, word here. <laughs> Fortunia, which could be Christmas berry or the other one. Yeah, see that's really nice there. And more can probably come off. Yeah, we've got a little tool that I can pull that out. Um, this one is really interesting here. I did not more of that. I might try to get more of that. I think this might be bug damage, which is what happens when they chew on the edges of the leaf before it hits the water. That's kind of neat in its own way to... Mm -hmm. And the whole thing just kind of like shifted slightly, which is why we have that great big break in the middle. And that? that one is a bit of a scale. So... And we can usually tell ours from... They're usually a nice reddish-orange color. And so they show up really well, especially in the sunlight. You can't see the rings very well in there, but you can mm -hmm. see a little bit of them as they go around in a circle. <laughs> and <clears throat> when they have rings, it tell it part of the way we tell it from like a cone scale from a pine cone or a felt, because they like grow in concentric rings along there. That's another bit of the uh, floresante there. That's a really good detailed one. This one's possibly like hawthorn of some sort, because you can see the nice pointed um, teeth right there. Because almost all rose family leaves have sharp serrated teeth that point up. Even in the wild now. See, these kind of point out and they're kind of compound teeth, mm -hmm. so they're not quite there. This one is definitely a bit of sassafras, because there's no edge margin here, and how they kind of... Um, branch together so all the different veins will group together like that. This is one that 
Greg pointed out. Oh. Wait, what's left of fishers? This one, a little bit of fisher? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, uh, I didn't hear what you said. Funny if there's maybe a, a jaw or some teeth on there. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. It's a nice solid piece, too. Good couple of leaves on the back. The rest of this is worm traps in here. Oh, yeah. So, this is the piece over here. Mm -hmm. And we got a little bit of a wing over here. And a little bit of a bone structure there. A couple of ribs up in there. Um, it could be some parts of some leaves and stuff in there, but yeah. <laughs> Overall, it's a really nice piece. I'm gonna grab my pin vise real quick. So, what are you thinking? What do we? What do we? I what do we know. want? What of the? What of these do you want to take? Hmm. Definitely like this one. Okay. And I think yeah, that's, probably the that's big good. One. Sometimes when they dry out, you can do this, or you can take them a, a brush. But I forgot mine over there. You can just like dust the rest of it off. If I can get a bigger piece, usually I'd do that. But see how it cracks like right along there? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll take these out and we'll try to get them out as bigger pieces so we can glue the other side. But... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. See, so this is actually damaged mm -hmm. before it hit the water. So you got a little bit of screen right here, but this is mostly gone. That'd be good to have some Yeah, so we'll go over here. Yeah, so we'll go over here. <laughs> like so. Worried about, oh, here it works. And normally I'll make sure there's no other extraneous cracks so that it doesn't. Sometimes they break wherever they feel like it. As it is? Let's spin this around like so. Oh yeah, see there's something right there too. Oh hey. Okay. Once it dries out, you can I think that I mean that's a good size piece just right there already. Is it possible to split right across some, there? Split some of these out so they're slightly smaller, you think? Or Yeah, you want it right across here? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I was really fun. We we got some good stuff. Andy, thank you so much for showing us around the facility here and um, doing the prep and the identification. And Greg, thank you up at the site and lovely uh, your lovely dog here. Ruby, yeah. turn around. Oh, come on, Ruby. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. No, nope, camera shy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so all of the contact info for Stone Rose will be down below. Um, I'll have all the links. They have an amazing website, which is really, really good. All the info you need is going to be there. So check that out and definitely go to the website as well. You can see the listing. I will have some high quality photos of this material up there as well, along with probably some stuff taken under the microscope. So go check that out. What an incredible time hanging out with Greg and Andy at Stone Rose. Just what a great experience, you know. Um, we are not paleontologists here. We are not fossil experts. And to be able to uh, go communicate with people that are, well, that, just that, is uh, quite, quite the great experience. Um, I mean, Stone Rose is really an excellent value. You know, uh, it's 15 bucks a person, and uh, you get to keep, keep three. Well, you guys saw it. Um, the membership is 60 bucks for a couple and, uh, yeah, go check it out. I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's worth it, you know? Um, also <laughs> here's my old Arbor press. Um, I'm going to make, uh, make something just kind of like what they had there with their little nipper. Uh, this thing's been collecting dust. I don't really have the, I don't use it anymore. So this will be a great way to uh, repurpose that, um, for the future. So these, uh, 
fossils that we have here. Um, up on the website, currently rockhounding.com, under the location listing, there will be high-res photos, some photos under the microscope, and all of that good stuff. It might take me a little bit, um, but go check back um, and in the coming days in and around when this video posts, all of the photos will, will be up there. So uh, enjoy. Definitely uh, give Stone Rose a, a shot. Um, I, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very cool. I mean, just the, the educational aspect of it and being able to learn hands-on from people like this that are like excited about fossils is, it's priceless. It's priceless, you know? Um, so we'll leave that one here. All right, everybody, y'all take care, and I will catch you in the next video.